aircraft eight feet to the air. Made in for start. Right away, Houston. And the Sunnyvale flight director has just confirmed the successful deploy of the inertial upper stage and Galileo. Galileo reports positive telemetry of deploy. Also, we see the orbiter uh, performing a minus X translation maneuver to move away from the IUS Galileo stack. Uh, Houston. The spacecraft is stable. Galileo is on its way to another world. Roger, Atlantis, we copy. That's great news. Thanks. Well, during the next few days, Galileo is now approaching the inner part of the Jupiter system one more time. This is our 31st orbit around the planet, and we're going to be going very close to the innermost of the large moons, Io, and right over its north pole. The Chvastar uh, volcanic region on Io is up in the northern latitudes, and we know that it's been very uh, uh, active in the recent years. We've seen volcanic flows there, we've seen a big plume of gas and dust uh, back in December, and uh, we're interested to find out just how active it's been and what changes have happened there. If the uh, uh, volcanic activity is producing one of these large gas and dust plumes at the time we fly by, there's even a possibility that the spacecraft uh, for at least a few minutes would be flying right through the, the top of this volcanic uh, activity, if you will. One of the, the, the things we're really interested in learning about uh, the uh, volcanic activity on Io is just how uh, often it occurs, how it changes the surface of Io, what type of volcanic activity it is. So we're going to be, we've been tracking this area, if you will, for, for a couple of years now, and we're really interested in looking and seeing what sort of changes might have occurred. Uh, interestingly enough, the main reason we're flying over the polar regions has to do with another interesting aspect of, uh, of Io, which is that it interacts very strongly 
with the Jupiter magnetic field and the radiation belts of Jupiter. And we're quite interested in whether Io itself has its own magnetic field, which can, if you will, stand off the, uh, uh, the Jupiter field. And flying over the poles is one of the ways that we can best determine that, because it, if Io does have a field, it's, we believe it would be strongest there. Uh, we have not been able to detect unambiguously a internal field on Io from previous flybys uh, from uh, equatorial passes. So we, th we think this polar pass may give us a clue to, to at least be able to tell us how large or how small an internal magnetic field Io might have. Well, magnetic fields and planets are, are, if you will, intrinsically interesting. Uh, we're not uh, uh, even completely sure how they're generated. We have uh, ideas and theories based on studying our own Earth and how fields are produced by moving, conducting fluid metals in the Earth's core. Uh, and we're very interested to find other examples of planetary magnetism to test out these ideas. So in a way, by me measuring this magnetic field or its lack of magnetic field, that would be interesting also. Uh, that tells us something about the deep interior of Io and it helps us test our theories about uh, what sorts of conditions lead to having planetary magnetic fields.